I've been hunting ever since I could remember. I think my first experience was with my father at the age of seven, where we went on a camping trip near a forested region of the mountain range of Stara Polina. It is a long chain of mountains that cut through the middle of the Bulgarian land. We were hunting wild boar and elk. It was the middle of September and the soil was slightly dampened from a heavy downpour that had lasted about three days. I remember staying in a small hunting hut that my father and some of his friends used to own. It was surrounded by pines and bushes that bloomed with berries in the spring and summer. We used to go there to hunt for a whole weekend and then come back with either a nice prize or empty handed. But whatever the prize was, the ultimate one was the experience. After my dad's disappearance, however, hunting had become less frequent. I remember clearly the last time that I ever saw him. It was December and I saw him cleaning his rifle and preparing his stuff at the kitchen table. With his back turned to me, I heard his warm voice in that chilly morning. Are you sure you cannot come with me, Ivan? He asked. There was a slight hopefulness in his words as if he expected an answer that would fill him with joy that day. Dad, I'm sorry but I can't this weekend. I need to study for my exam this Monday and I'll be leaving this Sunday morning to go back to the capital. But don't worry. This semester is almost at its end and I'll be back next week for almost a month for the winter break. And then we can do whatever you want. I exclaimed that day. He sighed and turned around to face me. He gave me a hug and then went and hugged my mom and kissed her on her forehead. All right now, I'll be going. I'll text you when I'm at the cabin. I'll see you guys in two days. He stepped outside and a cold breeze came in, making me shiver. I saw his back turn with the rifle on his shoulder, as if he were a soldier leaving home. That day, we received his text a couple of hours later, and after some random texts of things he saw and almost hit, and some other small chats like how the weather was, the temperature, and etc. He was never a man of typing of his whereabouts, though. A couple of years back, he would simply leave and wouldn't tell anyone anything. After my mom's constant nagging, of course, he did sort of develop a habit of texting, especially when he went out hunting. Saturday rolled around and he sent us a good morning text. Following that, he would go ice fishing in a nearby lake. Me and my mom were sort of puzzled, as he never usually goes fishing. But my father has always been a fan of trying something new for a change. There was this instance once where he went on a hunting trip using a bow and arrow. He knew he wasn't good with archery, but he simply wanted to see, and I quote, how the ancient people did it, and if they did, I can too. Hours had passed and we didn't receive any text. Afternoon rolled around and my mother did begin to become worried. She called him and sent him maybe 10 to 15 messages, until he finally responded. Hey dear, everything is fine. I'm fine. My battery died when I was coming back. The song of the mountain sat me entranced and I didn't know it was turned off. Can we speak later? I need to sleep. My mother was furious but she knew she couldn't do anything, so she let it be. And then night came, and no texts, no phone calls. We began to get worried again, but knowing our father, perhaps, he might be doing something and completely forgot that he had to send us anything. Hours simply passed. I've stayed up almost all night, almost for a text, but it never came. There was no need to worry, I said to myself. It was almost Sunday morning, and he would be here by nine, just like usual. But he never came back that morning. It was a colder that day. I remember it very clearly. My mother and I were looking at our phones every passing hour, waiting for our response to our calls. The afternoon was almost approaching, and the night sky was getting slightly cloudier and darker. My mom by that time had informed the police officers and the park rangers but they notified her that a search would have to wait till the next day, as of a standard protocol. 
She protested at first, but there was nothing that could be done. The next day, a search by a local policeman and some park rangers went on the location of the cabin. They informed us that no one was there when they had arrived. However, they did find his belongings and a truck parked nearby. My mother and I were devastated as more days had passed and my father had never returned. Days turned to weeks and weeks to months. The whole town was in shock. It had even made it into the news. A man from the town of Lovich disappeared on a hunting trip near a forested area of the Stara Planina. Him or his body is not yet to be found. Needless to say, the whole month was just a pain for us. My mother was broken, and I, well, I was angry. The whole Christmas and New Year's were filled with darkness for me. No laughter, nothing was the same, and having the occasional fake sad look of everyone around me. I know my father. He wouldn't just get lost like that or get into danger. Something wasn't right. His last message plagues me to this day, and I want to go there and see for myself. Spring came eventually and most of the snow had melted. I had been informed by a police officer, a friend of a family, that a new search would take place in mid-March hoping for any remains to be found. But I wasn't sticking around to wait for the police search. All winter my gut had been telling me that my father is probably dead. But there's something else that just doesn't seem right. One weekend, I decided not to go to my mother. I had instead picked up my hunting and camping gear and left the capital and headed out towards the cabin. I knew the road would be safer this month to drive at least, but that doesn't mean I shouldn't be careful. I left around 9am. The road was long and through forested areas, thus taking more time to reach it. As I drove, I saw the sun shining in the evergreen forest. Its light rays going through the leaves and hitting the leftover snow, making it sparkle and glitter. The spring breeze was sweet, and memories of my father began circling in my mind the more I approached the location. I saw some wildlife springing back to life. Deer, rabbits. It was beautiful. After about four hours of driving, I finally reached the location of our cabin. Thankfully, I had my spare keys with me and I unlocked the wooden door. The place was cleaned by the police and they had gathered most of my father's belongings and were sent in for investigation. I felt a weird sensation seeing the empty cabin. A haunting one. As I stepped inside, the floor began creaking. I was startled by a bunch of birds flapping their wings and exiting the cabin panicking. How on earth did they manage to get in here? I wondered while I tried to catch my breath. Not too much later, I heard a strange sound coming from outside, faint and distant, traveling along the spring breeze. I went outside and tried to locate the source of this humming. As I made a walk around the cabin, I noticed the possible entry of the birds, the back window of the cabin. The one that is connected to the bathroom was opened, halfway up to be exact. That's strange. Could the police have left it open? As I stared at the open window, I heard the faint, once indescribable sound again, this time coming from amongst the line of trees a couple of 20 to 30 meters afar from where I stood. The sound was enchanting. It was a song, I remember it. A sweet tune, like a choir sang by women but coming from one source. It sounded sad and lonely yet haunting. Minutes passed but it felt like years. I knew I was hypnotized by this thing. Deep in my core, I think I knew what it was, but the thought, I could not accept it. The haunting tune became more alluring. I felt my feet unwillingly walking me towards the mysterious tune as I moved towards the tree line. I faintly remember a figure standing amongst the tree trunks. Pale white hands seemed to grasp the trunk and a long white gown could be seen partially hidden from behind. A face of a young woman, puffy cheeks and long black hair, 
illuminated by the sun rays. I heard a whisper, a soft, angelic voice calling to me, and as I almost came halfway to meet her, my phone began to ring. The loud music made me stutter. My heart began pounding fast as if you were awakened in the middle of night from a slumber to the sound of an unexpected alarm. It was my mother. I quickly took a glance towards the direction of the woman. She was nowhere to be found. No voice and no sound were heard now. Only the trees and the birds chirping and my ringtone breaking the forest sounds. Ivan, hey, I wanted to ask you if you were coming by this weekend. I was still trembling, and with a stutter in my voice, I responded positively. I will be, mother. Later this day, I just had some work that I had to do. Okay, I'll talk to you later then. I love you. A small tear rolled down my eye. I've never felt the sensation of warmth for a long time. I love you too, mother. See you soon. After I closed the phone, I turned around to look at the cabin one more time. I was frozen in place at what I saw. It was her again, but this time, she stood there motionless, humming in a low tune. Her limbs looked skeletal like a corpse, and her long black hair covered her bowed face as she stared at her feet. Who are you? What are you doing here? I yelled, but the woman didn't pay any attention to me. This didn't feel right. I remember taking my rifle and loading it and pointing it at her. And that's when I saw it. Its limbs twitched and sounds of broken bones were moving and being placed back into a disgusting formation. She became taller, more skeletal looking, like something out of a horror film. The long black hair was pulled back as her skull seemed to morph into a long canine shape. Its skin was a ghostly pale and wrinkly like a preserved mummy, and its hollow eyes were a faint blue light emitted. They were focused on me. The hunter had become the prey. It opened its long mouth and gnarled, making its thick saliva ooze like a mad dog. I was frozen from fear, and I knew that it smelled it or sensed it. My legs began to shake and my heart was racing. I knew that I had to do something faster, I would be a goner. I took a quick glimpse at my car that was parked behind the horrifying beast in the cabin, situated almost next to it. As I was making my plan, I saw it slowly crawl on its four wicked limbs, and slowly make its way towards me, while licking its gnarly lips and making noises beyond of human comprehension. And then it talked, in a voice that made my heart sink. A voice that I haven't heard for months. Now, Ivan, why don't you take a listen to the sound of nature? I was baffled beyond belief. Dad? I felt my tears beginning to form as the creature took one big step closing the distance. Now be a good son and come here. I knew this thing wasn't my father, but the voice, I haven't heard it in so long. It made me wanting to actually come closer, but I knew this would be a bad decision. I made a step back. I mastered all of my leftover sanity and aimed my gun, and fired at the wicked beast. I remember the sound that it made. To this day, it makes me still anxious. It didn't scream or screech like an animal, but like a human. He had kept my father's voice while I shot it. And to me, it sounded just like I had killed him. It was unbearable. It moved like it was about to charge. I saw its eyes getting visibly angry and filled with rage. And then it lunged towards my direction and for once, I felt my body responding to my command. I dodged on its left and began running as fast as I could towards the car. I heard its footsteps approaching and its gnarly mimicked voice cursing and yelling my name. With haste, I opened the door and locked it, but the creature wouldn't have it. It face-planted on my side window and began scratching it while still yelling in my dad's voice. Come on, Ivan. Don't leave your old man alone again. Come here. I pressed on the gas pedal and began driving off like a maniac. 
I could hear its last sound, a cry of pain as the tires ran over one of its limbs, causing it to possibly break. As I drove, I could hear its voice in the distance. Ivan! While turning from a man to an animal, an abomination of an animal that is. I've never told anyone this, not even my family, but after some thought and research on the matter, I think I know what had killed my father and what almost killed me. In Bulgarian folklore, we have a creature named the Samadivas. They are creatures similar to sirens. They are said to be transforming into beautiful women dressed in white gowns to lure men into the demise. Some say they transform into your loved ones or your friends, and by using their angelic voice and charm, they hypnotize you, luring you to your possible death. They are often seen or heard near rivers, lakes, and mountains, which is in abundance in Bulgaria. So please, if you ever wish to visit or hunt in the Bulgarian forest, make sure when you come across a woman in white, or anyone you might not know that should not be there at that moment, make sure you leave immediately, or else you might end up like my father.